Well, it's that time, folks. The final episode for Season 3. Yes, I know. I know. I'm going to miss it, too. But the good news is, it went out with a bang. A very creative bang at that. Let's get into it. Alrighty, here we go. So first story is called Drug Traffic and stars Michael Rooker as a sheriff working at the border. A politician who's running for office and ran a campaign in Canada is trying to get back into the United States with his wife, guards, and supporters. His campaign is mainly focused on health care and the lack thereof. He even brought a sick woman with her mother on the road to show how bad things are. So, anyhow... As everyone's getting through the gates and whatnot, the daughter has become ill, and Michael takes notice and becomes suspicious. He takes the mother into a separate room to interrogate her while the rest of the people are sitting in a waiting room. Turns out, Mama has a lot of illegal prescription drugs and is attempting to cross the border with them. But she claims her daughter needs them because of her illness. And while all this is happening, the daughter is walking the hallways desperate to find something to numb her pain. Can't find anything, and something begins to change about her from the inside. And now it's too late, and not even the medication can stop what's to become of her now. It's a really good episode, but it's, it's kind of sad and I guess bittersweet is how I should put it. Michael Rooker, man, he played that part. Let's <laughs> do it with something else. Definitely uh, that stereotypical border cop, if you know what I'm saying. A very strong social commentary going into this one about the U.S. healthcare and how desperate people can be. Also, how some politicians can be fake. We don't see too many kills, but we do get but we get some aftermath scenes. The practical effects of the monster has an 80s look and feel, and I thought it worked. A topical story and well told. Great start for the episode. All right, so the next story is called A Girl Named Sue. And it takes place in 1968 in a small town that is taking the law in their own hands because of a man named Cliven, who's been jailed multiple times for questionable offenses. Since the police chief Foster won't do anything because this dude's father is mayor of the town, the town will take justice in their own hands. Chief Foster is against it and decides that he will intervene before things get out of hand. Now, remember when I said this takes place in 1968? Well, this story just hope happens to tie in with the Night of the Living Dead. Or should I say, it's like a side story that plays out in that world. Anyways, the Chief makes it to Cliven's house or place before anyone else. And what he finds there is something more disturbing than The Walking Dead. What did he find? And will he finally bring Cliven to justice? An awesome way to close out the season. This one was in black and white, just like the Night of the Living Dead back in, in 1968. And even used TV footage scenes from the original movie to tie in the, into the story. And it worked really well. This is a story about a person getting their just desserts, basically. And his most deserved way possible. The acting in the film had a bit of a late 60s kind of feel from back in the day and it added to the story not super bloody but it does pack a punch when it needs to this is just a little bit nitpicking on my side but the digital effects look kind of strange in black and white i mean it wasn't terrible or anything i mean maybe it's because i'm just not used to seeing digital effects in black and white but anyhow whatever creep show does it again with another successful season more good than bad when it comes to the episodes to me, the only week the only week episode was episode one, Mums Queen Bee, as well as episode three, the last Subaraya. But I will say the rest of the season was great. I'll say my stories that I really enjoyed are the skeletons in the closet for the fun story, and the thing in Oakwood's past for its bloody violence. Plus, Luke Skywalker voiced one of the characters in it. You can't go wrong with that, right? What are some of your favorite stories from the season? I highly recommend you check out this season if you haven't done so yet. And I'm happy that this series exists and fingers crossed we get a fourth season. Maybe even a Christmas special this year? (laughs) Well, we'll have to wait and see though, right? But hey, 
seriously though thanks guys for checking out these reviews I've had a great time doing them and I plan on reviewing season 1 because that's the only season I haven't done yet so look forward to that one folks hey stay tuned for more nastiness here because on the Don't Split Up channel hell has never been so cool she nasty out I'll see you soon would you steal a car no would you steal a computer? No. Would you steal a purse? No. Would you steal a TV? No. Have you subscribed to the Don't Split Up channel yet? No. Viewing without subscribing is a dick move. Don't be a dick. Subscribe. Click and subscribe. It's free.